So the next example from the stationary point in two variables will be told to locate the stationary points of the function z is equals to 2x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 2y plus 2xy minus 4. And you determine their nature, isn't it? So the first thing we get there, the six partial derivatives, isn't it? So you can see z is a function of x and y, isn't it? So you come there and you say that z is a function of x and y because it is written in terms of x and y, variables x and y, isn't it? Are we together? So the first partial derivative, we want to differentiate it partially with respect to x. So when we are differentiating this function partially with respect to x, only x is a variable. Y is considered a constant. Are you seeing that? Is that okay? So here, only x is a variable. If you differentiate 2x squared, you get? 4x. Only x is a variable, meaning y is a constant. If you differentiate a constant, you get? 0. Are we together? Because we are doing it partially with respect to x, meaning the whole of this is a constant 0, isn't it? If you differentiate minus 2x partially with respect to x, you get? Because only x is a variable, isn't it? If you differentiate negative 2y, only x is a variable, meaning negative 2y, the whole of it is a constant, isn't it? You get 0. Then you move, if you differentiate plus 2xy partially with respect to x, meaning plus 2y is a, is a constant, isn't it? So if you differentiate x, you get 1. You remain with plus, the plus 2y, isn't it? If you differentiate negative 4, 0. Are we together? So, First time, if you differentiate partially with respect to x, it means we can now do it for the second time again with respect to x. We can now differentiate this, this partially with respect to x, we can now differentiate it again with respect to x, isn't it? What do we get? Differentiating for x, partially with respect to x, we get what? Because partially with respect to x, only x is a variable, isn't it? So you get for, if you differentiate a constant, you get 0. If you differentiate 2y, you get? Because partially with respect to x, only x is a variable. All these becomes constants. Good. Go again. The first time we did it partially with respect to x, the second time we now want to do it partially with respect to y, isn't it? So if you differentiate this partially with respect to y now, what do you get? Meaning only y is a variable, x is a constant. So it means the whole of this is a constant, isn't it? You get 0, this is a constant. If you differentiate, you get? 0, only y is a variable. If you differentiate 2y, you, you get 2. Are we together? We are done with that part. Then we go back to our function. Instead of doing it partially with respect to x, we now want to do it partially with respect to So instead of doing this function with partially with respect to x, we now want to do this function partially with respect to y, isn't it? What do you have? So if you are doing this partially with respect to y, what does it mean? Only y is a variable, x is a constant. So what do we have here? The whole of this is a constant, you get? Zero. zero. If you differentiate y squared partially with respect to y, you get? Only y is a variable, isn't it? Meaning this minus 2x is a constant. So constant, you get zero. Minus 2y, y is a variable. You get? Negative 2, isn't it? If you are differentiating this term partially with respect to y, it means 2x is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate y, you get 1. So you remain with the plus 2x. If you differentiate a constant, you get? Zero. Are we together? See, we've now differentiated that function partially with respect to y. See, we can now do it for the second time. You can see here, first time, we did it partially with respect to y. So for the second time, we want to do it with respect to y again, isn't it? Are we together? So if we are doing it with respect to y again, only y is a variable. So any x is a constant. So 2y, y is a variable. If you differentiate that, you get? Negative 2 is a constant. If you differentiate, you get? 0. 2x is a constant because only y is a variable, isn't it? If you differentiate a constant, you get 0. You are done. Then you move to the next one. The first time we did it with respect to y, the second time we, want, we now want to do it with respect to x. Meaning if you started by x followed by y, whether you start with y followed by x, you should get the same thing too, isn't it? So you can see, when we now differentiate this partial with respect to x, meaning 2y is a constant, isn't it? 0. Only x is a variable. Negative 2 is a constant 0. If you differentiate 2x with respect to x, you remain with 2. Are we together? So from here, we have all the 6 partial derivatives. So all the 6 partial derivatives, you can see, 
the highest exponent here is 1, meaning they are only linear, they are going to form linear equations when we are determining the stationary point. So it means that stationary point is just 1, isn't it? So at the stationary point, the derivative is, is 0. So at the stationary point, the derivative either partially with respect to x or the derivative partially with respect to y is, is 0, isn't it? So we substitute the derivative partially with respect to x, what did you get? 4x minus minus 2 plus 2y is equal to what? 0 or derivative partially with respect to y, what did you get? 2y minus 2 plus 2x is equal to 0, isn't it? So can we now write them in form of a linear equation? Start with the first one here. 4x, before we simplify so that we see if substitution will work, isn't it? If elimination will work, isn't it? So 2x then plus 2y, then negative 2 going the other side it becomes, isn't it? So here we've started with x, meaning here we must also start with x, isn't it? Are we together? So we start with the plus 2x, isn't it? Plus 2x is just 2x. Then followed by this plus 2y because there's a sign of positive in front of it, isn't it? Plus 2 to be equal to negative 2 going the other side, positive 2. So you can see we have 2y, 2y, so we don't need to divide those two to remove the common factor because 2y, 2y, we can use elimination, isn't it? Are we together? So this is positive 2y, this is positive 2y, meaning we subtract them to eliminate because both of them are the same sign, isn't it? Are we together? So start, 4x minus 2x, what do you get? 2x, then 2y minus 2y is 0, isn't it? To be equal to 2 minus 2 is 0. So what is the value of x? x is 0, you divide both sides by 2, isn't it? So after you found x to be 0, you get the value of y by substituting x to be 0 in any of the two equations, isn't it? So if you start with this first equation we have, 4x plus 2y is equal to 0, where the sides we put 0, isn't it? So that we have 4 into 0 plus 2y is equal to what? 0. Are we together? Oh, it's equal to 2. Very good, very good. So 4x plus 2y is equal to 2. That is very good. Then it's equal to 2. So what do you remain with here? 2y is equal to 2, isn't it? So this implies 2y is equal to? So what is your y? y is 1, isn't it? Very good, you divide both sides by 2. So what is our stationary point x, y? The x value we found to be? To be 0, isn't it? And the coordinate of x, its y coordinate is 1. So that point is point 0, 1. Are we together? So we've determined the stationary point to be 0, 1. So after determining this station, after locating this stationary point to be 0, 1, the next thing we want to determine is nature, isn't it? We want to determine is? So we construct the Hessian matrix. The Hessian matrix. So the determinant of the Hessian matrix, we define the nature of that stationary point, isn't it? So here you had, you had your z to be the function of x, y, isn't it? So the determinant of the Hessian matrix, two variables means a two by two matrix, isn't it? So you put your f's, put your f's, then you start by defining the row. The first element, the first member here, x, defines the first row. So the first row is x. Then the second, y, the second variable, y defines the second row. So the second row is, is y. So row 1 is x, row 2 is y. We are done with the row. We go to the column, isn't it? Again, column 1 is x. So the whole of column 1 is x. And column 2 is y. The whole of this column 2 is y. Are we together? Yes. So that is now the determinant of the Hessian matrix. Then we come and put our point there for what will be the determinant of Hessian matrix at the point 0, 1, isn't it? So that will be what? Start substituting f of x, x, you found to be 4. Any of them which is not a constant, you substitute the values of that point, isn't it? Yes. 
if a now this is not a constant, you substitute the values of the point to get a constant value. Okay? Then you move f of x, y you found to be? To be 2. Then you move f of y, x you found to be? To be 2. Then f of y, y you found to be? To be? 2, isn't it? Good. So what is this determinant? Product of the main diagonal minus product of the? Minus? Product of the other diagonal, isn't it? What have you found? For so what does it mean? It means the determinant for if from here is not where you define the discriminant is always the negative of the determinant of the Asian matrix, isn't it? Meaning the discriminant is negative of what? Of the determinant of A. Meaning discriminant is negative of are you seeing that? Are we together? So we found the determinant of the Hessian matrix is greater than zero because four is greater than zero. That implies that the discriminant is less than zero because one is opposite of the other because of this relationship, isn't it? So if the determinant of the Hessian matrix is greater than zero, then it means the discriminant is less than zero, isn't it? And when the discriminant is less than zero, that is a turning point. So it means when this is a turning point, we now learn the nature of this turning point, isn't it? So the nature of that turning point is the first principle minimum, f of x, x, isn't it? Are we together? So what is that your f of x, x? What is its value? For So 4 is greater than? Are you seeing that? So greater than means minimum. So that implies our point zero 01 is a minimum point. Our point zero 01 is a minimum is a minimum point. Are we together? So that is how to handle such kind of problem. Let us meet in the next lesson on Thursday. That means, isn't it? Then we proceed.